If we haven't had a chance to meet yet, my name is Ryan. I'm your hosting pastor here at The Brick. You know, hey, we mentioned earlier free service that we were coming off an amazing week. We had 10 people get baptized last Sunday. We can celebrate that right fast. Extra big deal to me because my 9-year-old son and my 8-year-old daughter were two of the ones that got baptized, so I really feel it. It was all in my feels. Um, uh, made me feel like it was, we were a good, you know, me and my wife had done a good job that we were good parents, um, but really we had just bribed them, so they came on up. But no, that's not what happened. But uh, hey, I'm excited to be here this morning. When I was praying and asking God, hey God, what do you want me to speak on? What do you want me to touch on? Everything in my life seemed to point in the direction that He wanted me to preach on the subject of patience. Everything except me. Because I don't want to preach on patience. And the reason I don't want to is, is because I don't really feel qualified to do it. As a matter of fact, I asked God a couple of times. I said, God, there's got to be another guy because I'm not the one. Um, I just don't feel like I walked it out enough to be up here and say, hey, here's what you should do. Um, if he would have asked me to preach on sarcasm, I could have tore the roof off this place. <laughs> like I really could have. Um, but that's, that's not what he asked me to do. And then when I was fighting with him about being qualified, he reminded me how patient he is with me. And how it's all right if I hadn't, don't have all the boxes checked yet, I can still kind of dabble in the area of patience. So we're going to talk about it for a little bit this morning. And the first thing that I want to talk to you about is when I'm thinking about patience, have you ever heard this sentence or something close to it? Don't pray for patience. Or don't ask God for patience. Have you ever heard that? I've heard it. And the reason that people say that is, is because there's this stigma tied to that sentence or that phrase that if you pray for patience, God is going to send a series of tribulations and trials to your life that hopefully if you can live through these things He's going to send to you, at the end you'll be patient. Matter of fact, there's this whole idea that patience always costs. And this morning I actually want to put a different spin on it and I want to preach a message that I want to talk to you about how patience always pays. Patience always pays. So the first question I have, I've got one of the three that I'm going to ask, is that are you patient with God? Are you patient with God? Maybe you've never even considered if you are or not, but are you patient with God? Um, Romans chapter 8, it reads like this, verse 25. I want to read it and then we'll kind of get some light from the Scripture. But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait eagerly for it with patience and composure. If we hope for what we do not see, we wait eagerly for it with, um, for it with patience and composure. Romans 8, this is how I read that verse, is that if I'm going to have a hope in a God that I cannot see, it's going to require some patience. It's going to require some patience. And if I'm going to serve a God that I cannot see, I've got to learn to be patient with Him because not only can I not see Him, I can't see what He sees. So I've got to have some patience. And when I say patience, I don't mean let's sit back, let's chill on the recliner, let's eat pizza and wings, let's just live life, and if God wants it to happen, it's going to happen. I'm good. I'm big chilling. Hey, you know, He wants me to be this. He'll make me this. If He wants me to do that, He'll make me do that. That's not the kind of patience I'm talking about. I'm walking through my living room, and my two oldest children, they're playing a game called Fortnite. Have you heard of it? It seems like it's an enigma. But anyways, they're playing Fortnite. And, uh, And I'm like, hey, what do y'all want for Christmas? V-Bucks. What's V-Bucks? It's it's money that we can put on Fortnite. They're virtual dollars. And instead of you getting me clothes for Christmas, Dad, give me some money and I'll buy clothes for my characters for Christmas. That is ridiculous. Anyways, yeah, I love some V-Bucks. What are you going to get with that V-Bucks? I'm going to buy a fake axe. No, you're not. You're going to get something real that you that lasts, that there's not a season on. Or Anyways, but they're playing Fortnite, and when it comes on, it's the two of them, and I notice that there's 100 people in the game. I'm like, what's going on, guys? They're like, it's us against 98. And I'm like, whoa, that's intense. Y'all against 98 people? Um, when we played video games growing up, it was Mario against a dragon. That's all it was. Um, but this them against 98 different people. So I leave the room, and I come back, and I see that they're doing pretty good, and I leave again to come back, find out they got first place. The two of them got first place out of 100 people. So in that moment, I'm thinking, man, my kids are fixing to make me a lot of money playing Fortnite because you can do that these days. And I'm thinking, they're going to make me my retirement playing Fortnite. A few questions in, I find out they're not good at the game. They're good at hiding. They just find a spot and they camp. They find a spot and they camp in that one spot. 
And then at the end of the game, when there's only a couple people left, they bum rush that guy who's been fighting hard for 30 minutes, take advantage of his weakened state, and they win the game, and now they've got the gold by hiding. And it's funny in Fortnite, not so funny in life, when people think you can get the blue ribbon, the gold medal first place, by hiding, waiting on God to do everything until the end. That's not the patience I'm talking about. The patience I'm talking about with God is the patience to where you've done everything you know to do. And you stay in that spot. And if it's two hours, if it's two months, if it's two years, if it's 20 years, you wait on Him to come through because not only do you believe He will, but if it didn't come from Him, you don't want it anyway. That's the patience I'm talking about. The patience that pays. The patience that builds up your character. The patience that when you look back, you did not like the journey, but you would not rewrite a single bit of it because He knew more than you did the whole time. The patience to where when you get what you wanted in life, you value the process He took you through more than you value the thing that you wanted. You're like, hey man, this, yeah, this is, that's a nice new car, but it's fleeting compared to what I learned through generosity. Hey, this is a great job, but it's nothing compared to what I learned through for Him believing God to take me places and putting His favor on my life that I could not take myself. Patience pays. I reminded, I, uh, I was 19 years old and I had, I believe that God had told me, hey, it's, it's time to leave this school and go to, I wasn't still in high school at 19, but it was time to leave this school and go to Bible college. Well, um, Bible college cost $2,800 and you could not get a grant. And the reason it cost $2,800 is because they had a bunch of alumni that paid in and then every student after it was broke down owed $2,800 and you owed it on a day, but you had to bring it in cash or check. So I'm sitting there and God tells me, hey, this is what you're supposed to do. So I believe him. And then the closer it gets, I'm thinking, man, this money's not showing up. But I knew to be patient with him. And I knew to trust him. So I'm saving my money. I'm working really hard. I'm trying to get to $2,800. And a week away from my money being due, I, ha- I still only owed $2,800. <laughs> Does anybody feel me in here? You know, so it seemed like it is, oh, man, still $2,800. So anyway, so I'm thinking, hey, I'm going to give up. I'm not going to go, at least at the other school, I could get a loan and I could pay it off later in life. You know what I'm saying? Like this one right here, money's due today. Um, it wasn't due today, but it's due right now. So I was a week away from doing that. I'm thinking about quitting, but I was reminded, hey, I can be patient with God. I can be patient with God. So we're at a, um, a, a worship experience at church, and it was on a Wednesday night, and they're taking prayer requests, which is just a time when people would say, hey, do you need God to do anything? Share it with us. We'll all pray together. Um, uh, and I wasn't going to say anything, but my mom was in the room, and she was feeling the weight of that 2800 and she happened to mention that, hey, Ryan needs $2,800 to go to Bible school, otherwise he's not going to go to Bible school. And I was like, thanks, Mom. Appreciate that. Um, but uh, there was a gentleman in the room. Now, remember, patience pays. There was a gentleman in the room. His name was Perry. And God led Perry, spoke to Perry, moved Perry, however you want to verbalize it to where you can connect with it. God did something in Perry to where he felt like he was supposed to cover the $2,800. The only thing is, Perry was just as broke as I was. (laughs) Perry didn't have the $2,800. So we said, what good does that do? Well, it, it would depend on how available Perry made himself. Because if Perry's... Patience in God meant that he couldn't do it on his own, then he wasn't going to do it, then yeah, I might not have gone to school that year. But what happened was, is that next morning on Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Perry went around to local businesses in Muskogee, and he knocked on doors, and he asked the office managers, the, the people that owned the business, that he could speak to the people working there. And some of them would let him do it, and I visited with someone in one of those rooms, and they said, here's what Perry did. He walked in the middle of everybody, he grabbed a chair, he stepped up on a chair and he began to tell a story about a young man that God told him to help send to Bible school and ask if they would help. I get there Sunday morning. I have no idea what's going on. Like, I have no idea what's going on. And I get there and the pastor calls me up front and I'm like, oh, he knows. And I don't know what he knew, but there's a lot of stuff he could have known. You know what I'm saying? Like, there was a lot of stuff he could have known. Like, I wasn't going to confess, but I wasn't going to deny anything first either. Anyways, he calls me up there. Perry comes up there, Perry's crying, and I was like, I never did nothing to Perry. Like, I know this was not me. I'm clean. Uh, Perry gets up there, got the money in his hand, and then they tell me the story. 
And you said, well, patience pays 2800 Well, it did in that moment, but what I want to get to you is that the confidence that I have in my God coming through is so much more valuable than $2,800. Patience in God pays. It pays. And can you imagine Perry knocking on doors? And you know some people had to tell him no. He came in there asking for money. No, you know, I'm sure there's some signs that said no solicit. He still wanted how come? Because he was going to do what he could do and believe God to do the rest. So patience with God does not mean that he is going to provide some miracle that you can do on your own. You need a job, you can apply, he can work the rest. You, you know what I'm saying? You, can, you, you, need, you need a spouse, you can't be a hermit. God's not going to airdrop a wife into your house. It's not going to happen. You've got to do what you can do, and then God is going to do the rest. And there are some things that require God's help that you want God to be the one doing it, I promise. Especially in the arena of a spouse. Sexy at 20 and sexy at 35 are two different kinds of sexy. When I get home and there are vacuum lines in the carpet, that is sexy. Dinner on the stove, whoo, girl. And I mean, you need to be physically attractive, but what I'm saying is, is that he can look, all right, yeah. He can see what, I'm trying to be serious right now. I mean, no, he, he can see what you cannot see. So the areas that you need his help, you really need his help. But you have tied his hands until you have done your part. And then once you have done your part, you get there and you wait on the train to come through. You bought the ticket, you booked the trip, you showed up at the station, and you hold tight until the train comes through. And if you've been holding tight for five years, you know what you have developed in the area of strength and faith in those five years that you never would have got if it would have happened instantly. You're patient with Him. You're patient with Him. So the first area is, is that are you patient with God? Second is, are you patient with yourself? Yeah, they don't get any easier. <laughs> are you patient with yourself? You know, I'll notice that I'm in, impatient with myself in regards to comparison. Like, I get, I get on myself because I'm like, man, there's no way. They're already doing this and they're doing that. And, you know, you're, you're 36 and they're 35 and a half. And they're, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, it's silly the way that we will compare our lives to other people. And a piece of advice I have for you this morning is don't compare the things about you that you know to the things about someone else that you don't know. So you know your struggle, you know your trial, you know your story. You only knew what you only know what you see over here. So you're going to compare what you're aware of to the thing you're just guessing about. And then we get impatient with ourselves because we feel like we're not measuring up to this potentially a facade of what someone else is putting out. And then we're impatient. Like, you know what? I should be further. I should be faster. And maybe you should. But maybe that's not a facade. Maybe they took the advice I'm giving you. Maybe they were first patient with God and they were patient with themselves. Because what I've learned about healthy people is that they were patient enough to heal. Healthy people took the time to heal. And maybe what you see in their life that you're drawn to is that that's just God working things through them and you don't know the trial, the struggle, and the tribulation. All you get to see is this side of it. But if you would have seen Him five years ago, you wouldn't have been drawn to Him. And what I want you to do this morning is that hold tight to God, don't give up on yourself so that maybe your story can be that light for someone else five months from now, five years from now, five days from now, where they look at you and say, you know what, I want what they have. And when they come to you, I want you to be able to say, hey, listen, why I'm healthy is, is that I trusted God, I gave myself some room to heal. So I've got um, an addictive personality. There are some things that I never engaged in growing up um, for spiritual reasons and other things I didn't just because I knew where it would lead. Um, uh, like, I, I was binge watching TV before there was ever Netflix. Like, I mean, I've got to, I, I can chew a pack of gum in one church experience. Like, I can down the whole thing, no problem at all. And, and I don't even feel like I'm working real hard. I've just got an addictive personality. So, and, and when I recognize that about myself, anyone else, you've got some things to where you're like, hey, if I start a little bit, I'm, 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 I'm all the way there, you know. Um, and what I recognize is about people with addictive personalities is, matter of fact, what I recognize about humanity, let's just say it like that so no one feels left out. But what I recognize about human beings is this, is that if there's something that we know that we need God's help in, we receive His help and we start doing better, there's this area of what seems like peace. 
Like we're not at war against this thing anymore. And somewhere in this process of peace, uh, maybe we, we fall back because since we don't feel the sting of it anymore, we don't feel the sting. And I don't just mean substance. I don't just mean something you drink. It could be an attitude. It could be negativity. Matter of fact, it's probably more an attitude. It's probably negativity. It's some things. Maybe, maybe, you're, maybe you have a, a struggle with gossip. There are some things that, are, that, that really are daunting and haunting, and maybe they don't feel like a big deal to us, but if we would see the direction that they pointed our life in and do a self-evaluation, we'd be like, whoa, that... That's, that, that's worse than this other thing that I think someone else is struggling with because of where it's got me. But there's an arena of peace and then we'll dabble back with it for a little bit because it doesn't feel as bad anymore. And then we dabble and we come back and then we get on ourselves and we break ourselves down. And we get so down and we get so out because we shouldn't have done it because look how God, good God has been to us in this period. And what I want to tell you is it's not that you don't need to recognize that, hey, that wasn't the best choice for me. But you need to lean on the same God that got you right here. Like, you can't be so impatient with yourself that you recognize that it was never your ability that got you pointed in the right way anyways. The same God that got you on track here and this period went good is the same God that will point you back right here. You say, man, I don't know if I can go to Him because, you know, He, he might see my stains. I've got good news for you this morning. The blood of Jesus, it cleans stains. It doesn't leave them. So when you look to Him, He will clean you up again and again. I'm not saying don't get help. I'm not saying don't try. I'm not saying don't run away from things that are really kind of trying to haunt your life. But I am saying that people that are healthy have taken time to heal. Give yourself some room. Give yourself some room to heal. And then reposition the bar. What do you mean by that? I'm going to rename the bar in my life. The only measuring bar that I have in my life is that what is God saying and what is God thinking? They're saying this, they're thinking that, I'm thinking this, none of those are the bar anymore. What is God thinking and what is God saying about me? Because He is a good God, He's a healing God, He's a loving God, He's all-knowing, He's all-powerful, and He has set your worth at the value of what He paid for you, and He paid His priceless son's life so that he could purchase you so never allow yourself to think or live beneath the worth that god has given you and yeah you may fall but you've got to be patient with god but you've got to be patient with you and you've got to give yourself room and time not excuses call a spade a spade but once we've located the issue, lean on Him, look to Him for Him to fix it and for Him to help you. And it doesn't matter if He had you needed His help yesterday and you need His help tomorrow, you need His help um, to you. It, join the club. We need it every ounce of the day. The more I study patience, the more I recognize I just really need Him. I just really need Him. So one is, have you been patient with God? Two is, have you been patient with yourself? Uh, and the third and last point is, have you been patient with others? Like I said, it doesn't, that, that one's not easy. That one's, it, it doesn't get any easier, in my opinion. It doesn't get any easier. And the reason for me that being patient with others gets really hard is because I skipped the first two. I'm not patient with God. I'm not patient with myself. So there's a consistency, and I find myself, I'm not patient with others. I find myself this morning, before coming up here to preach, and I was like, I'm going to call Pastor Jared and tell him he's got to preach this, because I found I, I wasn't patient in my home. I wasn't patient with the people that have given me the best of them. I wasn't, you know what I'm saying? Isn't, that, isn't it crazy how the people that are the closest to us oftentimes get the worst of us? And, uh, and so I wasn't patient. I was like, hey, I can't do this because I'm, I, I'm not patient. I'm not patient. Um, are you patient with others? For me, there would have to be a pretty strong driving force for me to say, you know what? I can be patient in all these areas. And actually, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 it's, it says this right here. It says that love is patient. So God, what force have you given me to enable me to be patient? He gave you the very best force there was. When he described love, he said it was patient. Yeah. And when God in his son came down and gave his life for us, he was patient. He did not pull himself off that cross. He was patient. How can I be patient with God? How can I be patient with myself? How can I be patient with others? Love is patient. And that is the enabling force that I have in my life that helps me to get back on the horse and be patient even when I don't feel like it. My eight-year-old daughter that I mentioned got baptized. What was kind of cool about her getting baptized that you don't know is it's just a couple weeks before we're having a conversation, her and I, and I say it's a conversation because there's not arguments in my house. My eight-year-old kids is not going to argue with me. That's my house. We're having a conversation. 
and we're having a conversation, and I look at her, and her name's Cadence, I call her, I call her Lox. I said, Lox, here's what we're going to do, this, this, and this. And she turns around, and she looks up at me, and she says, are you good, bro? <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> Am I? No, I'm not a bro, you know, I, I, I'm your daddy, and yeah, I'm good, but what, like, what, what's going on here, girl? Um, uh, and I, I never wanted to say this, I can't stand saying this, but in that moment, I find myself saying what I had heard the whole time that I was growing up, and I don't even really believe it, that you should, obviously, like, you shouldn't do this, but I said, hey, girl, you know, I got you here, <laughs> like, and I can take you out, and I said, I don't believe that you should, you shouldn't take them out, you know what I'm saying? Like, you shouldn't do that, um, uh, but, uh, but in that moment, like, I found myself patient with her. I was like, this was not my strength. Like, I didn't, I didn't send her to boarding school. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't send her off. I didn't do anything that I wanted to do in that moment. But I found myself being patient with her. And I can't prove that that exact moment is the moment that led to her wanting to get baptized. But what I can do is say is this, is that when you are patient with people, it gets the best out of them. And I have a question, what if what you want relationally, what if what you want on the earth, what if what you want to see happen in life is not, is not happening, not because it doesn't exist, not because it's not out there, not because it's not in that individual, but what if you just haven't applied patience to the right spots for it to come to the surface? What if with your spouse the things that you wish you could see different, what if they're already there? You just haven't nurtured them in patience. What if the thing in your kids that you feel like, man, they better change, they got to shift, God, what am I going to do? What if you just applied patience? What if that boss that may rightfully be a jerk, what if you were calm and paid him something he didn't deserve because it was paid to you first? What if you were patient? And then when you were patient, God started working. And then you are patient with your friends. And you are patient with yourself. And you are patient with God. And you start to notice all these things started taking place. And then life got a whole lot better. And it might not be because any of your circumstance changed. But you changed. And when you change, you've got that strength to wait on God. To wait on yourself. And to wait on people. I believe there's a group of people in here that even as I'm talking... You'd be willing to say, hey, you know what, God, I want to make a commitment. I, I want to apply patience in one of these three areas. So if you'll bow your heads right fast. Father, I believe that there are a group of people in here that you're talking to their heart. Or that they're going to make a shift. They want to make an adjustment. Lord, but we need your help. We need your help to do it. Father, we need your patience with us to do it. And if that's you and you're in this room and you know, hey, you know what, I want to make a commitment. I, I want to be more patient with God or I want to be more patient with myself or I want to be more patient with others. I know I need to do it. If that's you, would you just raise your hand right fast? Yeah, I see the hand. I see the hand. Hands all over the place. Hands all over the place. I want to pray for you. Father, we thank you we have your grace. That's your enabling power to do what you've asked us to do. And we, we received your grace this morning. Father, your help, we ask for your help. Lord, there's a benefit to waiting and being patient and to trusting Father, that we don't often see into the other side. Help us to hang on until we get to that place. Help us to hang on until we see the, the manifestation of what we're believing for. Or then when we look back, help us to see that we have a history with you that says we can trust you and we can rely on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There's another group of people in here that I believe you said, you know what, I've never experienced the patience of God. I've never asked Him to be the Lord of my life. Well, I have a fact that I want to share with you, and that's this, that whether you're 10, whether you're 20, whether you're 50, he's been waiting on this moment. If you're 10, he's been 10 years patient so far. If you're 20, same, 50, the same. He's been patient with you, waiting on this moment. He's been waiting on this moment. So as we bow our heads one more time, if that's you and you're in this room, you said, you know what, I want to receive Jesus as the Lord of my life. I recognize that I need his help, that I need his patience that I need His goodness in my life. If that's you, if you'll just raise your hand right now and meet me eye to eye. Yeah, I see that hand. I see that hand. 